Hello YouTube, my name is Harry, this is my channel Future Shock Digital. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to edit video in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's jump into it. So firstly, what is Adobe Premiere Pro? Why might you want to use it? Adobe Premiere is one of the leading NLEs, non-linear video editors out there, and it has become ubiquitous in the editing world. However, it may or may not be the best for you. It relies on a subscription model, which if you're a casual user over a period of time might end up costing you uh, a bit of money. However, one of the benefits is because of the subscription, your business or institution might already have an account for you and you can use your login on two computers, uh, three computers, but two computers at the same time. So you could use it at work and then use it at home as well. Uh, and it's industry standard. The skills you learn in Adobe Premiere Pro you can use on any other NLE. Um, with the exception of maybe Final Cut Pro 10 because things are a little bit different uh, with that. It's competitors Final Cut Pro which has stability and efficiency. Final Cut Pro 10 is a lot more reliable and stable than Premiere. Premiere has a bit of a reputation for not being as stable. Final Cut Pro is able to run on older hardware as well, uh, better than Premiere. So that's one of the benefits. Avid, Avid is seen as professional Hollywood level or at least that's the reputation it has. DaVinci Resolve is free, mostly. Uh, the, there is a paid-for version which has more plugins and, and stuff. However, DaVinci Resolve is not going to run on an old laptop. Hit Film Express, I have a video on the, on the channel here explaining how you can edit in that NLE. One of the better, biggest benefits of Adobe Premiere Pro is the Adobe Dynamic Link, which will link up Premiere Pro with other Adobe products, say Adobe After Effects or Adobe Audition. So you can jump between these programs without having to render and re-render. So that is definitely an advanced feature, uh, definitely a, a, a great feature. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it much in this video, but keep in mind that is uh, definitely something worthwhile. So how do you actually edit video in Premiere Pro? So firstly, media management. You need to know where you put your files. Premiere Pro doesn't do this for you, which is actually a benefit. Uh, gives you more control of how you set your things out. Simply take your SD card, put it on your computer, transfer your files to somewhere you can use them in the future. The general rule of thumb is to put them on a separate hard drive to what you're running Premiere Pro on. So right now I'm going to put all these files into a folder, um, Australia 2021 Queensland. So create a new project in Premiere Pro, file new project. Make sure you save this in the place, the same place that you want. Uh, the folder that you've already created. This is very important to have it in the same folder because if you need to move this project to another hard drive or to another computer or, or have to edit it somewhere else, you can take everything with you. However, you don't have to put all your project files in the same place. For example, you might have shot some footage in 2019 that you can use in your 2020 project. It doesn't all have to be in the same place, but it is good just to organize things in a way that you can, you can understand. So this project file is very low in kilobytes. It's not something, it's just a recipe, so to speak. It's not something that you can actually use. Um, you can upload or give to someone uh, to watch. So keep that in mind. The project file is not a video file. You still need to render things out. And I'll tell you what that means in a moment. So now you have a project file. In the bottom left-hand corner here, Import your media here. You can double click and um, import it that way. You can drag and drop and throw it in there or you can go file import. Just import all the files into Premiere Pro so Premiere Pro knows what files it is working with. If you have uh, heaps of folders from um, designating different things like different times, different days, different uh, cameras, uh, Premiere Pro will recognize those folders, that folder structure and um, create bins for the clips but you can create bins yourself to rearrange things how you want it in Premiere this will not affect the uh, files on your hard drive so before we look at the footage we should create a sequence there are two ways of creating sequences I can just drag and drop any file and throw it into the timeline here and it'll create a new sequence for me based on the specs of the camera this could work for you however you might encounter uh, if you're using many different cameras or if you're using uh, mobile phone footage or if you're using footage from, from a GoPro or, or something else with different specs that you're not familiar with, you might end up with a sequence which isn't quite what you expected. So what we can do, we can go to File, New Sequence and put in basic specs. For this video, um, I'm going to do HD, which is 1920 by 1080. So now I'm ready to go through the footage. I recommend clicking this button here so you can see a thumbnail of each clip. 
So go through the clips one by one and find the perfect shot. Most likely you'll be cutting off the heads and the tails of the clips uh, if the camera was a bit shaky when you pressed record. So you can make an in point. I and O on the keyboard, I is to create an in point and O is to create an out point. Once you've done that, just drag and drop the footage onto the timeline. If you get a pop-up saying your footage is a different resolution to your sequence, you can re accept this or you can reject it. Uh, it's all about keeping the sequence settings that you want for that particular sequence. If you don't want it, that's fine. So by the way, this is called three-point editing. You're making a point on the first clip, an in point, an out point, and then you've made a point on the timeline. So throw it on there. So continue to do this until you have a rough outline. This is called a rough cut. So once you have all the clips on your timeline, you can start doing timeline editing, where you can decide using the tools on the, over here, how you want to change things. You can use the arrow tool to make things smaller, longer, or cut using the razor tool. But at this point, it could be a good idea to duplicate your sequence and make another cut. The reason is because as you start removing things, You've already gone through a phase where you've added clips into the timeline, but when you start removing them, there's a bit of hesitancy, like, oh, if I remove this clip, I have to go back and find it. That, that's why, at this point, I recommend duplicating the sequence and saving it as a final cut, or most likely a rough cut part two. That way, you won't have any hesitancy cutting out your clips, and you most likely would need to cut out as many clips as you can. If your computer is struggling to keep up, it might be a good idea to, to create proxy files before you even start editing the footage. Creating proxy files has become a lot easier in Adobe Premiere Pro. All you have to do is click this button and that button. So some tips. Control S as you go along. Control S to say is to save. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro does have a fantastic autosave function, but it's always good just to um, save it as you go along yourself. So as you go along, and you shorten things, you might find you have a lot of footage, a lot of gaps. Just right click on those gaps and click, click ripple delete. So with slow-mo, all I'm going to do is right click and say speed duration. And I know that it's going to be 50%. At this case, at, at this step, I want to add some clips on top of, um, of what I'm saying. So that's called B-roll. Add music. Adding music is very simple. Just drag and drop into the audio track. My tracks up here for video, the tracks below are for audio. Drag and drop it in, and there you have your music. Text is very simple. Just go to the graphics window, click graphics, click the text tool, and start typing. So color. Once you've got all your footage, you have a few steps to do with color. You might find that the color changes between clips in, um, on your timeline, and you might find that some of the color is not as uh, cinematic as you might want it. Now, I'm not the best at color, uh, have you ever done any of those colorblind tests? Well, apparently, I can't tell the difference between magenta and turquoise. So when it comes to color, uh, there's a huge amount to it, but I'm just going to skip over it for now. So now that you've got everything on your timeline, everything how you want it, you've got text, you've got audio, you maybe even have a voiceover, all of that, you want to export your video. Exporting the video just means you bake a cake. So just like how flour and butter on its own, it's not very nice, not very delicious. You gotta make it into a cake. Same with this. Uh, we got our sequence, and now we need to export it. For a compressed format, that's also a deliverable format that you can give to a client. Uh, the recommendation that I recommend is H.264 or H.265. Uh, your choice. H.264 is just a compressed format. So what are your next steps from here? Uh, voice to text subtitles is a great, is a new feature in Premiere Pro. Uh, log color, S log, motion graphics, after effects, centering a face and tracking it, exporting for different screen ratios, multicam syncing, voiceovers direct the timeline. As you can see, Premiere Pro has got heaps of other functions. Half of editing, to be honest, is actually solving problems. What I've mentioned here, how to edit, is only a fraction, a tip of, tip of the iceberg of what you can and what you need to do in Premiere Pro. Half the time, things don't quite work out. And that's where the skill of editing really comes into play. If you want to get more in depth, uh, Linus Tech Tips has got a four hour video right here, which I recommend. Uh, it's long, but it's worth it. Lynda.com has some good videos. And of course, YouTube has no shortage of such videos. And if you want to learn HitFilm Express, you can watch my video here. That's pretty much it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.